we live. Hey folks, good morning. Just Jilly, just check we have got audio. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to quickly... Yep, yeah, we're good. Okay, so uh, do I... Do I so I've stepped away from the camera now, so I now, now am further away from the mic. Just check your audio there again. It's a little bit... Yeah, just stand by. Yeah, just stand by. Okay, how's that? How's that? Okay, well, I know it's going to be fine. <laughs> okay, so a uh, very good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, this is Big Jet TV, and you are watching once again, uh, celebrating the centenary year for um, British Airways and uh, the second of the exclusive um, liveried aircraft that are going to be coming in this morning. Uh, the first one we saw, if, uh, if in case you missed it, we uh, we did have the BOAC 747. This time it is the A319BEA, British European Airways. Just a little bit of history on BEA. Uh, formerly the British uh, European Airways Corporation. Uh, now just bear with me on this because I am reading a lot of stuff um, off of um, off of uh, Wikipedia here, so uh, forgive me on that one. Because if you were, if we were with the BBC, of course, you would have auto cues and a very big budget. <laughs> so um, it, the British European Airways actually started around about uh, 1946. In fact, it was founded uh, January 1946 and uh, ceased trading in the th on, in, on the 31st of March 1974. Now, there'll be a lot of people watching who will uh, remember those days. I myself remember those days. I remember seeing uh, the BEA um, Tridents, uh, one of which there is a BEA Trident at Manchester. Uh, if you ever want to go and see that, that's in the viewing park there at Manchester. Uh, um, so uh, it was part of actually uh, BOAC, the BOAC Corporation, um, but they operated it as two separate entities. Um, but in 1974, they merged, and uh, BOAC basically uh, created the entirety, which became British Airways. Um, and of course, uh, but. Going back to the original um, uh, times of BEA, B British European Airways, uh, interestingly enough, uh, the operations, and this is quite an interesting, nice little piece of history, operations commenced from Croydon and Northolt. Now, if you go to Croydon, you can still see the remnants of Croydon Airport there. They do have the old original uh, terminal building still existing. And a little tiny patch uh, of, the, um, of the apron, which I believe they use uh, for model um, aircraft, um, radio-controlled aircraft. So that's interesting. And Northolt Airport as well, which is uh, still in operation today. Uh, the original aircraft that they use were the uh, DH, uh, that's the de Havilland, uh, 89A Dragon Rapide and the Douglas DC-3s. Um, obviously going on to um, uh, operate the Viscount, the Vickers Viscount, uh, a lot of us will remember that four-engined aircraft as well, uh, first of the turboprop era. Um, so uh, that was all very interesting and of course today's aircraft is an A319 being painted in the BEA livery um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of people may pick up the fact that she doesn't have the red overwing um, be just because of uh, today's regulations uh, they couldn't do that and so they've had to obviously I believe are they painting the underside of her wings red Jilly is that uh, is that right I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that but we'll have to check that later okay so in 1950 so this is four years after um, or uh, four years after they started operations uh, BEA operated the first uh, turb the world's first turbine powered commercial air service with the Vickers Viscount of course uh, from London to Paris what have we got Okay, okay. Uh, the airline entered the jet age in 1960 with the de Havilland DH-106 Comet 
4B. Uh, a lot of you guys will remember that. Um, I personally don't because I wasn't born then, but um, that, uh, that must have looked fantastic. And of course, we can see those images all over the internet. Uh, on April the 1st, 64, when I was one year old, it became the first to operate the Trident, uh, which we've discussed just now briefly, uh, tri-engined. Um, on the 10th of June, 1965, a BEACE uh, Trident 1C performed the world's first automatic landing during scheduled commercial service. Uh, a lot of people will remember that and I think there's uh, quite a lot of um, information online about that. So um, another fantastic day. We are in, um, and, and this is good for, B, uh, for British Airways what they've done today, is they've brought us around to this part of the airfield which is we are actually standing in the original uh, hangars for BEA, British European Airways. Um, so we're very fortunate to be doing that. Behind me, uh, you can see those jack stands. Aren't they impressive, guys? Um, that's the kind of thing that they would um, lift. You can see the jack points underneath the aircraft, and that's where they will lift the aircraft uh, to test undercarriage and when they need to take the weight off of the aircraft. So. Uh, quite impressive there. I'm not ex exactly sure on the, the, the load uh, that those will operate, but uh, it's pretty impressive anyway. I'm, I'd imagine there is all different types of um, jacks uh, available for all different variants of aircraft. So um, I'm going to come off of here now and uh, I'm going to give you guys a little look around uh, and um, going to wander over there because we're just next to the runway, the operational runway, so we're going to um, get ourselves a little bit of footage there, so just bear with me two seconds, Jilly. Okay, I'm, uh, my mic is in, mic's in pocket, not brass in pocket, but mic's in pocket. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Right. I'm going to unhook. Still got audio, yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So we're just going to uh, have a little look around here, as you can see. The original. This is where the um, short haul aircraft are serviced and maintained inside this uh, inside this hangar. As you can see here. The shorter of the aircraft, 319s, 320, and of course, Ted Rogers special, 321. Just there, that's quite nice. They put the heaters on. So here we go. Let's just have a little look out here. See if we can open the door and get some, uh, enough to be able to open the door. one here just uh, pulled up. Everybody happy on the feed, Jilly? Singapore Mini Slinger. Not that mini. Triple seven three hundred ER. Stand by to go out. Seven forty seven Queen of the Skies. Now to our left here, folks. Um, a lot of you guys will be. Um, knowledgeable about the layout of London Heathrow and uh, you will know that to my left is, or to our left, is Concord. So just uh, at what point we're going to be allowed to go out uh, and uh, have a little look around, uh, we're not sure yet. But obviously what, we're, what they're trying to do is obviously contain all the uh, press and media inside this position just for the time being. Not sure whether that's a Trent or a GE or what on that cradle, but it's looking pretty good. One of BA's uh, 777-200s. So let's just switch quickly to that position. Next to go out. 
all about BA today as well, so we will film as much BA as we possibly can. Just a little bit of information, uh, we do have a, uh, a lady and a gent flying in today. I'm not 100% sure uh, if it is, um, let me just grab my phone to stand by, if I can find it. Sorry about that. Flight Officer uh, Holly Sims, uh, quite an apt name as well, pretty cool. And um, Captain Julian Hall are the uh, are the operators today of this uh, BEA 319. Hopefully, yeah, we can hear her going out. Pilot Holly is commanding the aircraft in, which is great. And uh, we do hear that apparently they're going to bring her in row. So um, she's going to be, uh, even though this is the uh, 27 left, is the operational departure runway for today. Uh, it's one of our favourites going out there, folks. I know we don't like to, uh, British Airways wouldn't be too happy about this filming version, but um, you can't help but when there is a 346 in shot, be a little bit rude to uh, ignore it. So a little bit of airport activity right now. There's your lineup for the active two seven left departures. So they will be bringing her in rogue, hopefully. That is the plan, folks. And of course, don't uh, forget that this Thursday, uh, this week's midweek show will be on Thursday. A um, little bit of a, a different one for you. Wow. This is all remote, by the way, folks. I'm completely manual here. I'm not on the sticks, so forgive any shaking or any uh, movement. Obviously, the deeper we go. Picking up audio, GP, you all good on the audio? So this Thursday, we will be at London Gatwick, folks, airside at London Gatwick, um, focusing on the um, satellite terminal at London Gatwick. See, this is the most Trent 7, no, Trent 5's going out, isn't it? I'm sure you would want us all to stay um, around this area uh, looking at the aircraft. But um, let's just have a little wander around. Now, like they did with BOAC, they do have some, um, some pretty cool uh, memorabilia. These people are standing here with this nice warm air. So there's your BEA drive. Wow, look at those comets. Oh no, they're not. They're tridents. Oh, uh, sorry, Viscounts. My apologies. There's the comet. Comet 4. Some great images. Look at that old thing. So this is um, where we are right now, folks. See this um, comet is landing, London Heathrow, two seven left. And they, that building that it's passing over there is the building that we are in right now. And there is the 319 that we're going to be welcoming in this morning. So once again, thank you, everybody from British Airways for uh, 
inviting us here. It's uh, another historic day. Four aircraft um, are going to be painted in uh, retro liveries. Of course, we've already had BOAC uh, number one, 747. Um, let's just have a look at this jack, see how close we can get to this jack. Let's see what its jacking load is. BOAC 747. Next one on the BOAC list is the Landor livery. Um, so this is quite impressive. This is a little bit bigger than your average car jack, folks. So, um, looks to me like that's... Um, I'd say that's not for a 319 or a, or, a, or a minibus. I would have said that's more likely to be for a larger aircraft type, 777 perhaps. Uh, I may be completely wrong, but to me, just judging by the height of that jack, um, doesn't, it looks uh, too tall to go underneath the wing of a 319 or a 320. So the original doors here, now, um, if you're familiar with London Heathrow, uh, you will know that on the um, eastern side, east southeastern side of the airfield uh, are the maintenance areas at London Heathrow for British Airways. The, um, one of those uh, hangars, in fact, uh, uh, the, the, the hangars out on the east side are still um, governed and uh, you cannot actually make any adjustments to them because they are uh, part of English heritage. So these old hangars uh, are the originals. You can imagine the old, uh, the old aircraft being wheeled in here. Big sliding doors. Of course, that over there is a hoist, I'd imagine, a hoisting system. That's a smaller jack, an ever such smaller jack there. So those jacks, um, more like for uh, the single aisle aircraft. Still got feet chilly, everything good. This aircraft coming from Shannon this morning. IAC Paint Shops, um, of course, uh, have two uh, operational paint shops. One in Dublin, one in uh, Shannon. Uh, Shannon uh, is the um, place where they paint the single aisle uh, smaller aircraft, uh, whereas the um, larger aircraft are obviously like the Boeing 747 are painted at the IAC paint shops in Dublin. I think the Trident up at um, up at Manchester is actually uh, in a different livery than the uh, one we're used to seeing today. The original livery, the original BEA livery. I think it's got the uh, half the jack on it. Uh, it's got the Union jack. 
or should I say the uh, Union flag uh, livery on the tail. A slightly later livery. Started her descent apparently. Okay. Going over Pontypridd right now. So she's over the Welsh coast, making her way along the. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to go outside this time. Somehow I just don't think. Uh, it's a shame because if we were just told to go up to that line there, um, that would obviously be a, a wonderful thing. But. It is what it is, and we we have to uh, go by rules and regulations here. Obviously, a very um, sensitive area, airside in an airport, especially an international airport like London Heathrow. So the best thing to do, I'm guessing, would be to get as good a position as I possibly can of it landing. So this position here I imagine would be the best uh... the what sorry oh speed jack oh, okay beeline was the call sign hopefully uh, maybe today it will be uh, B line, the call sign for uh, today's aircraft, just for the one for the one off. Or will it be Speedbird? Oh, don't park there, mate. This is worth following. So keen amateur and professional plane spotters or av geeks, wherever you are in the world, first opportunity to see this thing live on air. And uh, of course, uh, people traveling from all over the world um, just to get a look at these uh, exclusive liveries. I'd imagine that uh, summertime is gonna be real busy around London Heathrow with plane spotters from all over the world. Don't forget, we've got special rates at the Hilton Garden Inn if you're interested in uh, staying over at London. As well as, of course, the Renaissance, um, positioned to the right-hand side of runway 27 right, overlooking the runway. Great positions there. Hilton Garden Inn, overlooking this section that you're seeing now, you can, uh, it, it has does have great panoramic views over the southern side of the runway. So depend, regardless of whether you're, uh, whether you're on 09 departures or 27 depart, uh, um, operations, uh, you will get a great view from the Hilton Garden Inn. Just check them out, room 747 is the one to go into. Uh, if you go online on YouTube, you'll see, and Facebook, you'll see the little uh, promo that I did for Hilton Garden Inn. Even though we're filming through glass here, you can still hear those RB211s. Sorry about that. So we do have viewers and members down at the paddock right now. 
either at the gates or uh, at Myrtle Avenue. Lots of Av geeks, obviously, I saw them all lined up this morning. Ready to get pictures of her. I hope you've got the right one -way, runway, folks, because uh, obviously there's a lot of guys and girls out there uh, waiting for her to come in on 27 right when I think they are going to call her in. Uh, rogue, as we call it. They will open the doors uh, once she arrives, I believe, anyway, um, so that we can get a good close look at her. like a little intersect. She's off to Lagos. Yes, yeah, intersect, yeah. Oh this is possibly JFK. Oh no this is no this is the this is this is not really an intersect actually. No it's not my apologies. It just just from this position. Is it? Okay I can't see. She's fully lined up now. Off to Lagos, folks. Yeah. Those RB211 shaking the room even up this far away. Here comes the other one. That's one thing uh, we get a great deal of on Big Jet TV, folks, at London Heathrow. Never a shortage of 747s. A350 is, um, I believe, uh, due into uh, the fleet this year. We're going to see the first A350. I think it's around about June, July time, is it? Okay. Now, we do have uh, a lineup of people over there, so what's going on here then? Here's one for Kaneko if she's in the house. Give me a call on the aircraft, Jilly. Give me a call on the aircraft. Just stand by, just stand by. Looks like we have to uh, make our way over here. Hold on a second. Look at Concord as well, folks. She's landing two seven right, left. You say less, Jilly. Till we go outside. <laughs> I think you think you might see it shoot up a little bit. Oh, I see. Sorry, my apologies. Okay. 
Yes, there is, yeah. yeah. Seems quite cool. I think I saw him uh, last time. Through. Bacon rolls, eh? Next there'll be 18 holes of golf as well. Oh no, I'm not good. Five minutes we've got. I just want to go out there now for my viewers. Let me go. Yeah. Oh look, this is the original BEA um, uniform. I saw you had some photographs earlier on. Yes. Are, the, are, are you are you ex ex crew ex, ex engineer. or? Oh, an engineer. Oh, yeah. really? On yeah. on which aircraft? Uh, Trident or started Comet? Started off with Comet. Yes. Then wow. Vanguard. Vanguard, yeah. Then yeah. Trident, 111, uh, Viscount, Airbus, 767. Wow. Very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, Array of aircraft. I saw that you've your on. Uh, last uh, report when the jumbo was here before. I was listening to your report. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, most uh, people get. Uh, you, had very, bit, you had a bit of a uh, contretemps with. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know that generally happens <laughs> in, uh, on live. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> but anyway, um, so you're in familiar territory here. Oh yes. Um, so. Um, Back in the day, they would have used these jacks, um, yeah, but, yeah. but a, 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 a slightly less, um, uh, 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 a, an older version of them would have they been, or yeah, would have been that hand jack and they, that sort of thing, or oh, hydraulics, are they still on I hydraulics? Think, I think they're all hydraulics. Right? Yeah. I, I didn't do much time here, I was more in the central yeah, area, on, I on see. the flight yeah. line, so I did okay. start here. Yeah. So you did on-wing stuff as well, did you? Oh yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, so the Comet, what was that like? To work on? Well, I was fresh out of um, Western Helicopters, oh, I see. and uh, after I finished there, there was opportunities here. So they were just starting off the BA Air Tours um, production, so they got these aircraft uh, second hand, and we were doing the maintenance on those. Oh, I see. And, and was that mainly was that uh, mainly engines or? Uh... I was mainly on the airframe side. On the airframe, right? Yeah, I being see. Being a new boy, I, I, yes. I managed to get all the uh, dirty jobs on the okay. frame. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to look at the engines getting? Not getting then. No? no, I didn't work on the engine at all on the Comet. No. Uh, okay. Later okay. on, when I was working on the Trident, the Spay engines, I was working on those in the engine overall, doing the hot end rework. That was basically. Oh, really? The, uh, the high pressure turbine at the back yeah, end. Yeah, and the LP turbine. Yes. Uh, stripping those down and then rebuilding them again. Really? Yeah. Uh, here at Heathrow? Or? Yes. Oh, yeah. really? Yes. Wow, so they had those facilities here at London Heathrow? To oh, yes. Very strip much the so. engines we, and. Uh, we had our own engine overhaul facility here and our own run pins over there as well. Wow. Uh, for the Spay and, and Viscount as well. Yeah. And Very the Vanguard engines, the time. So a lot of, a lot of um, obviously, a, a lot of difference in the engines as they were then compared to now. Oh yeah, uh, sure. They're much, much more um, economical now, yes. easier to work on. Yes, now, far more fan blades in those days. And oh, tiny yeah. engines as well, tiny yeah. little cores. Oh yes, yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it is actually quite impressive these days. The interesting engine, I, 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 I used to do engine runs on the Trident 
and the Trident 3B had a boost engine. I don't know if you realise the, the third it. engine at the back, is it? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That was a funny old engine because it made a lot of it was plastic, and it used to used to scare me rigid when I was running that because it was either at idle or at full chat, and it made the most horrendous noise when it was running. Wow! You could hear them going off at Heathrow. Wow! Pretty noisy. Yeah. Well, lovely to meet you, and thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Yeah, Enjoy the rest of your day. I will do. Thank, thank you, sir. Much. Take care. Yeah, and you. Okay, GP. Doors are open. A bit colder than Doha, <laughs> isn't it? Okay, so uh, here we are. Out. Set free. Uh, the first thing I want to have a look at, and we will be able to get a look at her, hopefully. next to each other. Just about see her behind that Dreamliner. Two bandits. Cut. Silhouetted, fully silhou silhouetted shot at the moment. Okay, nice triple seven on its way down.
four. 319 variant. on Thursday live at Gatwick Airport showcasing British Airways uh, fleet movements as well as everybody else now I've got a bit of a problem here I've got glare I've got a really bad glare Ockham, 
Okay, she's in the Ockham hole, folks. on this puppy. All handheld, by the way, don't forget. All handheld. What do you want to do after this? Okay, do you want to go to Atlanta and stay here for a I really want to get a... I don't think I'm going to run a puppy. So, we could... At least it's not... We have to get a tune. I just need somewhere to sit just for like half an hour just to get it done. Maybe we should do all the last time just go to the end. Like, it's not the end. Like, it's not the end. Oh, really? Captain Dave, if you're watching right now, Captain Dave, A380 pilot with British Airways. Thanks for serving us and also thank you for uh, representing and retweeting. We appreciate it, Captain Dave. A lot of air crew, of course, um, both members and viewers on uh, Big Jet TV. Yeah, ITV three days. Across the world. I'm doing a good tour. And we always welcome you. Uh, this is First Officer Holly Sim. Uh, Holly Sims, is it S I M S or S I M, Jilly? Holly Sim is uh, Holly Sims is commanding the aircraft uh, today, bringing her in, first officer, and uh, Julian Hall uh, will be the captain on board the aircraft. So he will be the one. Uh, he will be the one on the uh, on the radio, whereas uh, Holly will be bringing the aircraft in on the controls. I, I just don't know what Okay, uh, altitude check, uh, 7,000 out, out of the Ockham hole, folks. We've got a queen leading her in, apparently. Altitude 
you check GP. Just short of 6,000, folks. Not long now. This is not the aircraft. Don't want to confuse people. Of course, this is one of their Dreamliners. Always interesting to look up close at these uh, wing tips and the profile of these wing tips. Very interesting that it's not a perfect curve, it's actually a sort of like a, an odd curve, but obviously designed in that way to uh, maximize the aerodynamic effect on the wing. What is interesting that I did see earlier on was these uh, these old tannoys. Still there. Okay. Not long now. She's being led in by a queen, we believe. Imagine. A bit of a, uh, yeah, nice American uh, triple seven just about to make its appearance on the right there. who are uh, members of Big Jet TV. One of those is uh, Rich Torp, A330 captain with American Airlines. Good to see you on the show yesterday, Richo. Making an appearance when he can. Feet, uh, joining the ILS. I'm sure BA don't mind us doing a little bit of uh, airport apron action. Ah, oh, listen to those engines. side of the airfield taxiing out. <laughs> Give me a shout when she's three out, Jilly. Three miles out. folks.
on her own, nothing else on approach. Like they're actually waiting now for this rogue arrival. This is what this uh, Malaysia's 350 uh, on the opposite side waiting. This BA 777-200 holding uh, at the active. So any moment now, we should see it appear over the top of the sheds. Give me a altitude check. 1500. So, uh, Holly Sims flying in this aircraft must be a very proud moment for her, of course.
700. Oh, she greased it. Nicely done. Very nicely done. And look what we have. Just coming up to uh, show off a little bit. Okay, folks, we've got to move. We have got to move back now. Seven on tow up to maintenance, folks. As you can see, she's non configured, making her way up to the other side of the maintenance sheds around the other side of us. distinctive uh, anti-glare paint I'd imagine over the uh, on the nose section beautiful looking livery man nicely done boys and girls and IAC paint Shannon in Ireland have painted this aircraft Sims, 
taxiing, taxiing the aircraft in. red on the wing.
give out the uh, the union flag today, please. Yeah. Just understand. Dave, why are you watching me, Jack? So, just wait for the uh, steps to uh, make their way to the aircraft. Thankfully, it's going to be on the uh, starboard side. they need is an authentic set of BEA old school steps going up to it. They have all the American Airlines scrambling now to do their little retros. I did one for their 747 though, didn't they? Kind of. Do you look after Holly, who, who was for, no? Holly's based at Gatwick most of the time. Sorry? Holly's based at Gatwick most of the time. Oh, is she? Yeah. Oh, okay. Dreamliner has moved, yeah, we have got Concorde right in shot, so uh, we're not uh, she got a looking at least.
matching paint job, loving it. Proper retro. nostalgic because she's popped up right outside the original hangers here at London Heathrow. That would be good. Yeah, if there's nothing happening after this, then go yeah. ahead and take the steps away. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do.
uh, motors retro. Okay, well, there we have it, folks. BEA second retro delivery for British Airways. Now, uh, unfortunately, couldn't get out far enough on the apron uh, due to restrictions, which are uh, fully understandable. Uh, not able to get out there far enough to get a good close shot at Concord. Now British Airways won't mind this because they have a code share scheme going. But a uh, very smart looking uh, Iberia Express 320 Neo.
We just missed that. 747, Toba. Oh well. <laughs> If you're watching now, you must be very proud of your uh, your latest achievement. Amazing how quickly they are putting these things out, it has to be said. Um, I think this thing's only been in the workshop, in the paint shop for a couple of weeks. Less than that. She only went in last week, wasn't it? It was only last week she went in, so uh, you guys are uh, doing a great job out there at AIC. This, this really gives you a good idea, a real clear indication here of the, uh, the rudder. See the rudder, all the hydraulics have uh, drained out of the system. So the rudder is free to move in the wind. As you can see it moving there, freely in the wind. Still got audio GP, yeah? Still. So that, that's uh, that. Sometimes when we see the aircraft with their rudder cranked over, either left or right, that's literally due to the wind doing that. Uh, because it is Airbus, I believe, where the um, hydraulics actually drain out of the system. Um, whereas on Boeing, they keep the uh, the hydraulic system pressurised whilst the aircraft's at standstill. Uh, whereas on the Airbus aircraft, the hydraulics uh, allows the and you also see sometimes the uh, elevators also in their down position. Fans are moving uh, literally because they are high precision, uh, free to move. Those. Uh, the entire core assembly is uh, extremely um, free of any resistance whatsoever. So that is the wind that is uh, turning those uh, blades, not the engine power, that is the wind that's turning those uh, fan blades. So here we go, just have a bit of move in here, we are still live. Way, of course, but body. in the tub. Oh. Oh. So first time 
first time in many years that this hangar has seen a BEA aircraft parked up outside. Nineteen seventy four, I think it was, that uh, British Airways was formed by the uh, merger of the two groups, BEA and BOAC. And of course the first of the uh, British Airways deliveries, I have no doubt, are one of the ones that we're going to be seeing on one of their 747s. Which one would that be? The first British Airways livery? Do we know which one that would be? Which one, sorry? Spell that for me. Oh, Negus. As in Arthur Negus. Okay. Lima Yankee will be painted in the Negus livery. Wow, how about that? It's quite a good shot, that actually. 1973, did you say? So I would have been 10 years old. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to just try and do is hook out here, folks. I'm just going to um, going to get a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> movement here while I lock the uh, camera out, give me arm a little bit of a rest because I have done that entire shot um, have their own tugs, don't they? I don't think they used an Arta. I don't think so anyway. Alright. 
ready. off to British Airways for uh, putting the heaters on in here. We've got the big blowers going. Very appreciative of that. Heavy lineup.
those trends, man. shed and I'd live in it here with my cat and that would be it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. All I need is Wi-Fi and somewhere to wash. British Airways Day. Aircraft variants is a Boeing 777-300ER, uh, the ER um, designation is the extra range. Also the LR variant and the 200. ER is powered by the uh, GE-90-115B as are the freighters. That aircraft as long as a 747.
47 making its way up, folks. So we will grab that, if we can. GP. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Is this our bus coming? Hope not. No! I don't want to go yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Give me a break. Okay. Um. Looks like that is the shuttle bus. For us mere million minions. Just to the back of us, you can just see that is the Qatar Amiri flight 747-8 sitting over there. Obviously uh, either here on diplomatic business or uh, shopping at Harrods. One of the two. know whether uh, didn't get any uh, notifications of uh, Holly's um, of Holly's um, 
parents or anything like that. No, okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and station the, uh, get myself set up over there. I'm going to see if I can do an interview. Uh, uh It's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a task. Let's see if we can do it. Me running all over the place, <laughs> stamped on me fluffy bit. Uh, okay.
we can get a few words with her. going to take but uh, behind us we have uh, oh dear oh look at that for a backdrop folks Lost her? I think we might have lost her. Oh no, she's over there. Okay. Wow. Lots and lots of engine noise. Try and get a few words with a hole in a second, Jilly. Holly, hi, I'm Jerry from Big Jet TV. Hey. Hi, hey. Okay, so folks, okay guys, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Holly Sims, yeah. thank you very much yeah. for, uh, for your time with us. Uh, you must be very proud of flying this, air flying this aircraft in today. Oh, it's been a really, really great pleasure to actually be part of it, actually. Yeah, I just really appreciate it. I have to say, a great landing as well, because you flew oh, in, didn't you? Well, well, we flew in, but I have to say that the captain, who is there, oh, he landed the it. He yes, landed it. Oh, okay. absolutely. Okay, His but privilege. I dare say, uh, you've had, the, you've had your, your, your good landings. Oh, I hope so. Of course, of course. <laughs> and you're basically stationed mainly down at Gatwick, is that right? Mainly down at Gatwick, yes. Started up at Heathrow, did my line training. Uh, to the end of the year and then went down to Gatwick, yes. Okay, so um, for any uh, budding youngsters out there looking to become a pilot, um, sure. what, would you, what would you say to anybody who, who really wants to become a, a pilot and fly these aircraft? I feel like if that's your passion, then that's definitely just something to kind of keep pursuing. Uh, maybe get involved in something on the outside, like if you're young, go into like air cadets, uh, get involved in local uh, squadrons or uh, kind of private flying itself. Yeah. Yes, did PBS. you study at a young age yourself for flying? I did, yeah. I was in air cadets and I was really lucky to get a flying scholarship. So uh, oh, it, was, it was a really, really great opportunity. And uh, any plans to fly on the bigger jets in the future? Oh, it's definitely a dream I'd like to in the future. So uh, fingers crossed in a couple of years' time, maybe. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks very much oh, indeed no for your worries. time. Really appreciate oh, it. Nice to meet Take you. Take care. Thank you. you.
Okay, there you go, folks. Uh, that was uh, First Officer uh, Holly Sims. Very short interview, of course, uh, because uh, obviously there's a lot of other people waiting to interview her as well. So uh, that's uh, kind of about our time here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the camera rolling uh, so that you guys can get your real fix of jets and the noise and the feeling here at London Heathrow before we have to make our way out of here. So I'm going to leave you to it. Is that all good GP? Is that okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Somebody official here sits so as well. So. Sorry, mate. So, this here. Get myself some. Uh, show or what? and I come out from the 747 and I pan left. Sevens behind, one behind the other.
away. He's uh... no, no, sorry. He's uh... he's going to turn right any second now. Turn towards us. It's just another uh... waypoint in the taxiways. I see him, yeah, I see him. Triple. Oh, listen to that. Yeah. Austin, Texas bound. or is he uh, he is intersecting that 74 wow where's he going if I can grab hold of him. There he is over there. Is it?
grab the skipper. inside. Oh, that's a great shot there. the belly of a BA BEA 319 full run guys are still watching on YouTube or Facebook uh, but uh, we really appreciate your company hope you enjoyed the show today we will be back this Thursday for the uh, midweek show on Big Jet TV we will be live airside at London Gatwick uh, to bring you uh, much the same sort of stuff that you're getting here but close up uh, around the um, satellite terminal uh, showing you and uh, showcasing the um, 
the uh, movements, the long haul movements that they have at London Gatwick. And a lot of that stuff, of course, will be with British Airways as well. Uh, so thanks very much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. I've been Jerry Dye. You've been watching Big Jet TV. Welcome to all our new elite members as well who've joined us. And uh, we will be seeing you on Thursday. All the very best. Thanks for tuning in. See you later. Bye bye.